so glad that the fort is working. Oh, I'm so tired. Good job, Charmander, for keeping it up. Um, so, I knew one of you wanted me to talk about, like, psychology and stuff. I'll have to break out the, um, textbook for that sometime. I should have been sleeping over four hours ago. I need to be up in, like, three and a half hours. And tomorrow's a big day, too. Oh, I will help. I'm gonna survive. Oh, that feels good. You know when you have, like, an itch and you don't realize you have an itch until it's, like, a slight itch and then you itch it and it's, like, even a bigger itch than you thought. Not nice. Anyways. Intrinsic motivation versus extrinsic motivation. And a little cheat way to remember which is which. <sighs> Intrinsic motivation is when you're internally motivated to do something. Extrinsic, ex, extrinsic motivation is when something externally is motivating you. So like, either you're avoiding a punishment, or you're wanting a reward. So, um, something that can be difficult to figure out if it's extrinsic or intrinsic motivation is <sighs> losing weight. So people would think, oh, it's intrinsic because, like, you want to, like, exercise, you, like, you want to lose weight, so it would be intrinsic. But actually, that's extrinsic. Um, for intrinsic motivation with exercise, it'd be, like, you're exercising because you like the feeling that it creates, that sense of accomplishment when you hit that mile run and stuff like that. Um, that's where the tail used to be attached to his body. <gasps> Before I cut it loose. <sighs> um, I'm so tired, I'm so sorry. Um, you look like a mess. <sighs> Cognitive dissonance. One of my favorite terms because it's the term I can remember. Um, that's seemingly it was one I couldn't remember and I suddenly remembered it. So it makes me happy. <sighs> so sorry. Um, but anyways, oh I, I know I look like such a wreck. Mm, I apologize. Just close your eyes and listen to the video. <laughs> but anyways, um, cognitive dissonance. That's when you believe one thing and something else happens, but you have to rationalize it. So I know that sounds confusing. So let's say, um, Let's say you're against stealing, and you were, ooh, like, short on money that week, and you just had enough money to pay your rent, but not enough money to eat. So, um, what you'll do, well, not what you do, but, like, um, sometimes people might end up stealing and even though they might be very against stealing and like it's so wrong people need to be punished for that they rationalize it to themselves because their mind can't handle it and they say you know what it's fine that I'm doing this like it's a one time thing I really need the money to pay my rent otherwise I don't have a house like it's okay so that's cognitive dissonance confirmation bias is like when you're given all this information, 
You're given all this information, but you only seek out the information that confirms your belief. So, um, let's say you believe this one person is a really great person, and, um, I was going to use something as an example, but I don't want to take, I, I don't feel like you guys want to know that part of my life, at least not in this video, um, so, anyways, like, you think this person's a really great person, so, um, someone tells you otherwise, they're like, no, this person isn't that great. or something. Oy. So you like, they tell you, no, the person isn't that great. And you're like, why? And they tell you, like, all these different things. And like, yeah, he, like, cheats, he's angry, he has a short temper. Um, he steals from his family, but he, uh, is always there for his family. So then you hear, oh, he's always there for his family, and that's what you take away from it. You're like, oh, see, he is a good person. And you just, oh, gosh, his body gets pushed by Charmander. You completely avoid all the other facts of all the other bad things. <laughs> Which is not good, obviously. So, that was my quick little psychology lesson for you guys today. Oh. And another thing. Having a concussion or head trauma can seriously affect a person. Um, it can completely change somebody to be someone you don't even recognize. So, like, one person, if I remember correctly, because I learned about it in college, got to, like, his truck hit a tree, and he had, I think he knocked unconscious, and obviously that's brain trauma, or trauma to the brain, and, um, he was married at the time, and he ended up getting a divorce, and it was because, like, he used to be a really sweet and loving man, well, then he started becoming, like, verbally abusive, I think, and he would cuss all the time, <gasps> and he was mean, and it's just, like, it's, it's crazy. We don't take concussions as seriously as we should. I mean, we've come a long way from just like a few years ago, but still so far, far away. Do you guys see the movie Concussion with Will Smith in it? It's really good. I suggest it if you haven't seen it. I like those types of movies. It's based on a true story. being in the fort with me next time I'll try and remember the s'mores and the movies okay hope you enjoyed the psychology lesson it's time to go to bed good night